I had a nice workshop in Washington, D.C. this weekend, and an interesting thing happened. As many of you know, uh, I have my own theories about why things like coffee and red wine lead to longevity. And my theory isn't that there's something magic in the coffee or magic in the red wine. The, the magic is the fact that you tend to, when someone's having a bad day, you get a cup of coffee. It, when someone's having a, well, it comes on over, we open up a, a bottle of red wine. And what I think helps with longevity with coffee and red wine is the fact that there's connections made. I, I always use the word tapestry. And you can even see my, I'm making this knitting motion with my hands. Uh, the word fit from the old Nordic uh, means uh, to knit. Uh, and I, probably the best way to think about fitness truly is how you use a jigsaw puzzle. You fit the pieces together. Um, what happened is uh, a hand went up. And one of the things I also talk about in longevity is don't smoke. Uh, wear your seatbelts, the other. And the question was good. He said that at his work, the smokers have this really interesting uh, camaraderie. They, they get together, they have their own jokes, they have their own, they have their own gathering place, their own pecking order of how they do things. And uh, I'm certainly not telling anyone to smoke, but boy did I thought that was an interesting, at least question to talk about. Uh, I grew up in a home uh, basically filled with smokers. When, when I grew up, you know, we're, we're talking about a generation, those who raised me, who survived the Depression, the Second World War. My dad was born during the First World War, during the height of the great flu epidemic. Um, you know, these are people who saw a lot and overcame a lot and made the world a better place. Uh, their children, of course, <laughs> have seemed to have undone all their legacy. Uh, what got me, what got me thinking about this is I grew up in a home filled with smoke. Uh, my dad and all of his friends, they all smoked. Am I saying smoking is okay? No. But what I'm thinking is it, it's been spinning around my head for a few days is, boy, any opportunity we can take to build community, good community is always a good thing. As many of you know, a couple days a week here at my home, I host intentional community workouts. Uh, we just got done with one. Um, today is Tuesday's Buns and Guns Day, and we work uh, the hip thrust and goblet squats, and and of course, you know, we got to work the pythons. Uh, a week from yesterday is a uh, a holiday we invented here in the home called Christmas Adam. Um, Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, Adam comes before Eve. It's just an opportunity. It's just a, a our annual Christmas party, but. We just invented it because not very much happens on the 23rd. So we figured that would stay off of most people's uh, family things or, or uh, school related things. It's close enough to Christmas to stay away from school pageants, uh, far enough away from Christmas to not interfere with family events. So we literally in this home invent reasons to celebrate. Uh, if you ever get a chance to come to my house for practice Thanksgiving, we do that about four or five times a year. Again, I'm not saying you should go out and smoke, but what I'm saying is there's a kind of wisdom in thinking about ways to come together in community. Uh, as many people, uh, when I first got online in 1998, I thought the internet would actually glue people together. And of course, as we've seen, especially in the last three years, how actually how divisive it can truly be. So I think, I think part of my job, I, I think part of the reason I'm here on this blue-green jewel is to remind people of the importance of community. So this week as we move into the, some of the funnest times of the year, let's keep thinking about what binds us together and not those things that separate us.